is the United Nations preparing for Emperor Palpatine to make his arrival at the UN? Coming up on today's show. Technology is advancing. Knowledge expanding. Is there a chosen one that will save us all? Many traditions believe so. What if aliens are really astronauts? If giants were real, are other mythical creatures real? These topics and more on Awaken. All right, and welcome to Awakening, where we talk about prophecy, religion, conspiracy, opinion. I am your host, Isaac Slayton. Now, I know that may sound a little bit uh, far-fetched about like, well, Emperor Palpatine, well, not not like like literally, but like metaphorically speaking, because next year um, in September, just a couple months before the U.S. Um, election, they are voting on granting the Secretary General of the U.N. Um, emergency powers. And, and apparently Biden is actually for this. President Biden is actually is in support of this. Um, as, as far as other countries, I uh, do not know. I am looking into that. It's actually kind of creepy. But these emergency powers are absolutely insane. Before we get into that, though, let's get into like some background of this. So the United Nations, founded in 1945, has been a pillar of international cooperation and diplomacy. As it approaches its eighth decade, the organization is embarking on a new initiative known as Our Common Agenda designed to address the challenges and opportunities of the 21st century. So I guess they're taking Agenda agenda 21 and just like expanding on it pretty much. So, and if you're not familiar with Agenda 21, then really look into that because that is probably a very scary document. And and, and everything that I'm saying like um, like today is is not like like conspiracy or anything. It's complete 100% truth. And I will actually give you the uh, the um, sources for this because this is all available on their on the UN's website. The documents I'll be quoting uh, later on in the show. So anyway, the world is facing an array of complex and interconnected issues, including cli- climate change, global health crisis, economic situations, and political instability. In light of these challenges, the UN recognizes we need to adapt and evolve and, and evolve. So the Our Common Agenda initiative slated for next year aims to create a vision for the UN's role in a rapidly changing world. It's designed to assist uh, the effectiveness of organization and make necessary changes to better serve the global community. One of the key focus areas of this initiative is strengthening multilateralism. The United Nations has been a long symbol of international cooperation and our common agenda seeks to reinforce this role in the face of rising nationalism and unilateralism. Another critical element of this initiative is addressing the global challenges that transcend borders. Climate change, for instance, requires a unified response, and our common agenda seeks to provide a framework for global cooperation on such pressing issues. Furthermore, the initiative aims to involve a wide range of stakeholders, including governments, civil society, the private sector, and academia. This this inclusive approach recognizes that Solving global problems requires collaboration from all sectors of society. So what exactly is this? Well, let's take a look. So one of the things that, where'd you go? Oh, here we are. There are 12, um, 12 commitments that the uh, UN is wanting to do. Let me zoom in, let me zoom out, let me zoom in. Oh, here we are. I'm used to a PC, not a Mac. <laughs> okay, so there's a 12 commitments that they want really want to focus on. And the first one is leave no one behind. Renewed social contract anchored in human rights, new era for universal 
social protection, including health care and basic income security. Reaching the four billion unprotected. So I guess everybody else, you know, think for yourself. Reinforce housing, education, and lifelong learning and decent work. Digital inclusivity. All right, let's go on to number two. There's, there's actually like a, a, a lot more. I'm just not going to read like, like all of these. There's not enough time. But, um, number two, protect our planet. Well, of course, we've got to protect the Mother Earth, right? So leaders meeting ahead of the global stock ticking in 2023, commit to the 1.5 degree Celsius goal and to net zero emissions by 2050 or sooner. Package of support to developing countries. Action by the General Assembly on territorial threats of climate change and to prevent, protect, and resolve situations of environmental displacement. Now, on the surface, this all might sound like it's, you know, something good. You know, let's continue reading. Number three, promote peace and prevent conflicts. Number four, abide by international law and ensure justice. What is this, the Georgia Guidestones? Okay. Number five, place women and girls at the center. So I guess we'll have to officially make a definition of what is a woman. You know, one of these uh, great people that can help with that is Matt, Matt Walsh. You know, he did this whole uh, documentary because today we have no idea what a woman is. We knew what a, what a woman was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, but today we don't. So the UN, I guess, is going to have to decide for us as they place women and girls at the center. But under that, it says repeal of gender discrimina discriminatory laws, promote gender partially, including through quotas and special measures, include voices of younger women. All right. Number six, build trust. Now, trust is actually like a really important uh, thing to have when you, especially when you um, are trying to fix like problems, because you're not going to you're not going to fix any problems if like both sides don't trust each other. You know, if you want to be able to have world peace, every country has to trust each other. Every country has to like each other, love each other. We all have to be important to it. We all have to matter to each other. We all have to matter. But you can't say all lives matter because that's, you know, a red flag. But that's the only way you're going to have a utopia in this world. If you want a utopia in a couple of decades, then you got to be able to do that. All right, number seven, improve digital cooperation. To connect all people to the internet, including all schools. Avoid internet fragmentation, protect data, apply human rights online, promote regulation of artificial intelligence, digital commons as a global public good. Mm. Upgrade the United, up, upgrade it to what? Like UN 2.0, oh, 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 yes. Yes, upgrade the UN to UN 2.0. I, I, I'm just going to skip to going to the next one. All right, number nine, ensure sustainable financing. Number 10, boost partnerships. 11, listen to and work with the youth. That I, act, I actually um, agree with uh, to a certain extent because... You know, it's, it's one of the reasons why I think in, here in America we need to have term limits because let's say you have like someone who's a senator and they're like, I don't know, 70, 80 years old. Um, the world that they grew up in when, <laughs> when they were a kid, teens, 20s, that world is gone. All right. So like what, what they may think is what was a problem for them when they were growing up is not, a, is not today. Like I, we have different issues and different problems today. Because, you know, like, hell, 50 years ago, I mean, you usually have, like, what, one person working in the house, and it was usually the man in the house, but he had enough money to provide for vacation and the cable bill and the car. Almost everyone had a new car when we were a couple years old, right? And um, pension retirement plan, and it was just like a regular job in a nice, mediocre house. But nowadays, you get both parents working, and... Uh, the kids are working too once they turn 16 and they still can't get by. 
And people are like, increasing, increasing the minimum wage does not fix the problem. It just makes it worse because then you can increase the prices of everything else. What you need to do is actually lower the cost of rent to stop being so damn greedy. All right, and number 12, be prepared. Emergency platform to be convened in response to complex global crisis on global public health, global vaccination plan. I'm sorry, <laughs> that one got me. Oh, there are so many things I could say about that. All right, empowered World Health Organization. Okay, stronger global health and security preparedness. What, what is this? Accelerate product development and access to health technologies in low and middle income countries. Universal health coverage and addressing determinants of health. So basically, you want a plan to make sure that everyone is forced to do whatever the World Health Organization says. The WHO says, oh, we need everyone to do this. Everyone's going to have to be on board. Now, when it comes to like health and, and safety on the surface, you know, one may think like, sure, you know, that, that's, a, that's a good idea. But everyone's health issues are different. You know, that's one of the things like I don't think any medicine or any vaccination should be required because, you know, it may help Bob, but if Sally takes it, Sally could get sick. And then Jerry, Jerry could be in a coma as a result of taking it. And Sandra could, you know, lose a limb. I don't, I don't know. Like it, medicine affects different people different ways. Like all, all, all of our bodies are different. Like no one should be required to be forced to take any type of thing to go into your body. But anyway, so here are some of the, um, where did you go? Sorry. Into this. One, one of these days I'll actually get better organized. All right. So here are some of the things that went on. If this is voted on September like 22nd, 23rd, 24th of um, next year at the United Nations, the Secretary General will have power to do So many like to actually be able to um, implement rules and regulations as far as like mandatory vaccinations, um, total control over. Oh, here we are. Large scale climate or environmental events that cause major social economic disruptions and or environment degradation. And these, uh, these documents, like you can actually just Google them. They are the um, our common agenda. One of them is like the more recent one. And then like one of them is from uh, March of 2023. The one in March of 2023 actually has it all list out about what the uh, Secretary General's... Um, okay, for, uh, um, and it, it includes, you know, like if there's like a major threat from outer space. Um, for, uh, and there's also like unforeseen risks. So basically, like if, like if anything bad happens, if there's a disease like in, in, in the world, you know, the Secretary General can decide on forcing everyone to be um, masked and vaxxed. If there is like a, a an alien invasion, they can decide on what actually to do worldwide. And like, the Secretary General is not the president of the world. Okay, he's not Nikolai Carpathia and Left Behind series. Okay, he. <laughs> This is getting like really, like really like scary and ridiculous. It's like, it's like we're about to have a, a one person like run everything. And you know, what's interesting is that like a lot of these religions, all the major religions, right? The Buddhists are waiting for the fifth Buddha, Maitreya. Um, Hindus are waiting for the turn of Krishna. Uh, Muslims are waiting for the Mahdi, the 12th um, Imam called the Mahdi. The Jews are waiting for the Messiah. Christians are waiting for the return of Jesus. But like um like a lot of like the faiths around the world had believed, you know, like there's gonna be a man that's gonna come, unite the world together as one in the name of peace and love and security and all that. But like if this is what they're planning, then 
when this guy comes on the scene, he is not going to be for peace and love. He's going to be for total control. This is absolutely insane. So I'm interested in uh, learning about that guy. What, what religion talks about that guy who's going to run the world and like destroy everything but come across as, oh, it's all about peace and love and accepting one another because that is BS. Anywho, as we look ahead to next year and the unfolding of our common agenda, it's important to understand that this initiative is not just about setting goals, but about reevaluating the very nature of global governance and diplomacy in an increasingly interconnected and complex world. This initiative, <coughs> sorry, this initiative will be a global conversation inviting input and ideas from people and organizations worldwide. The United Nations seeks to listen to a diverse range of voices and perspectives as it charts a path forward. The success of our common agenda will ultimately depend on the commitment of member states and a global community to work together in harmony for safety and security to address the pressing challenges of our time. It is a reflection of the UN's ongoing commitment to making the world a better place. Oh, there was something else I forgot to mention earlier. Um, so for example, if the Secretary General ends up deciding, after he's granted emergency powers, or she, um, they can um, decide how long an event's gonna be. So if like, hypothetically speaking, if there was Like, oh, everyone has to be masked and vaxxed around the world for like 18 months. Okay, well, after that 18 months, he can decide, oh, you know, we can continue again for another 18 months or for another five years or 42 months, whatever it happens to be. I mean, do you guys think this is a good idea? Is it a bad idea? Let me know in the comment sections below. Until next time, this is Isaac Slayton signing off. <laughs>